On this episode of Music Day, a verified hit, we're dishing with the creator of Rap Caviar, a conversation about YouTube, Spotify, and African music with Tuma Bassa. We're going to tell you stuff people won't tell you. Real talk with experience. We talking business up in here. Don't give the people what they want. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, welcome to Music Day, a verified hit. This is your host, Monique Kelly. And today we have Tuma Bassa, who is the director of urban music at YouTube Music. Tuma is responsible for increasing YouTube's engagement with the urban music community artists and consumers. He was previously the global programming head of hip hop at Spotify, where he curated the popular playlist, Rap Caviar, one of my favorites. And his background includes stints at BET, MTV, and Revolt. And today we're discussing his career as a culture curator, musical trends around the world, and YouTube's plans to get people to the polls. Welcome, Tuma. Well, thank you very much, Monique. Um, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, uh, music day. Uh, thank you. That's all. <laughs> thank you for being here. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so Tuma, BLM broke records. Thousands of protesters in 100 countries worldwide protested in support of ending racial injustice. Have you seen reactions to the events reflected in people's music choices? 100%. Um, it's a records that, uh, like, like Baby, Little Baby, Bigger Picture, uh, or, or uh, Meek Mill, Other Side of America, you know, they basically top the charts. And, and even at YouTube, we had playlists like on, on, June, on Juneteenth, we had a video explaining what Juneteenth was, a, a Black Lives Matter playlist. We had the Black Lives Matter playlist already, but then we also had a Freedom Songs playlist that was a little bit more, um, uh, that's a little bit uh, wider. And, uh, it, oh, you know something else is uh, YouTube uh, dedicated $100 million to uh, uh, racial justice initiatives wow. and, and Black creator and artist grants. And uh, there's a whole lot of content initiatives coming up over the next three years. So that, that commitment and that uh, pledge, we've been in the works of, uh, of, of, of operationalizing like bringing it to life right now literally that's what we are right now that's huge that's yeah yeah, yeah. Huge. No, it's, no it's humongous it's humongous oh, yeah, yeah. that's huge yeah yeah it's all it's all in the press it's and it's but it's yeah but the great work is being done i'm i'm, I'm a witness i'm a, a, a part of the teams that are working on it and um it's it's like really yeah blessing yeah. that's amazing i love it now, that's interesting because prior to Black Lives Matter, how were you able to push some of these different curated genres prior? Because I know now it's probably a little bit uh, less challenging because people are more into the BLM movement. But prior to that, how would you get them curated and get them on? Well, well what I've noticed was the, the only times before you could do it like, was when an occasion came up. Whether it be Martin Luther King's birthday, or this year Juneteenth became an actual thing, where every every everyone was doing something for Juneteenth, uh, or whether uh, even before when Freddie Gray in the Ferguson happened, you know, uh, you know, is so before it was occasional and it de and it depended upon um, uh, events. Now I think it's more of the tone, and hopefully this lasts. That's the really that's right. That's really the question: is how long will this last? You know, uh, uh, we're already we're already we've already moved on uh, in terms of like event moments. Uh, uh, I don't want to name specific songs, but uh, it, we've already moved on to an extent. So, uh, Leo, in our company, he, he he told us to put our marathon shoes on. You know, <laughs> like hey, you know, like like. Prepare, be prepared to be in it for the long run so yeah. just for the occasion, you know? And so, 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 so that's, that, that's the, the challenge is making this a part of uh, who we are and, and what we do uh, uh, more so than, you know, like, like, 
like uh, when, when people were wearing trucker hats or you know what I mean or specific yep. or certain yep. brand, you know what I mean like nah like you know yeah so how do you see it how do you see yourself making it last through your role right now how can we keep this marathon going um uh oversight uh, is basically you know um the black executives at youtube we have an understanding and that's nothing about us without us you know what i mean mm -hmm. so if this is something dealing with um um uh black issues or black communities or black owned businesses or or black music or black culture that were involved in that we are active guide guider guides not guiders mm -hmm. guider is not a word active guide <laughs> i got you i got you <laughs> Yeah, but, but but you catch you catch yeah absolutely okay okay yeah absolutely yeah so 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 that thing that's more of like a leadership thing like yeah. is, is is that we're that 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 we, that we make ourselves available to uh uh um keep the trek going one of the things that we talk about internally is, is to make it feel um joyous mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become like additional work or right. burden or or charity or charity that that this is not philanthropy this is like hey we're saying let's do good business let's you know what i mean let's do this right so because when you when it's the other way around then you feel like oh i've done what i'm supposed to do i'm d no it doesn't end it never ends so right. so 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 uh so creating that kind of energy is really 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 key you know Really I agree. Good. I agree. And speaking of which, at YouTube, I feel like you guys have a read on the world. So do music trends follow social trends? Does music play indicate psychographic trends in community, country, the world? Yeah, I think, I think music sets the pace. Mm -hmm. uh, and, well, young people set the pace, really, because they're the ones who have a lot of time. And it matters in terms of social inclusion, like what they're listening to, how far ahead of the curve they are. Et cetera, et cetera. Their, their conversations, uh, uh, even even the, uh, yeah, even even in terms of uh, of the whole of getting girlfriends and boyfriends when you're young. You know what I mean? Like your mm -hmm. tastes and 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 how you you know how you keep up with the dance trends, et cetera, et cetera. It does matter. Those social on this matter. So I think it's more of like a youth, the youth, mm -hmm. then music, and then it. it, it, it on these technology platforms and uh, et cetera. And that's more of like the vehicle for spread. You okay. Know? Yeah. Now, one question I did get, and I think this is really interesting because you have such great insight. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, each one, teach one, bring someone up. So yeah. have you had, or do you have any of the other, of older entertainment execs that have mentored you to oh, bring you to this yeah. point? And who are they? Oh my gosh, so many. Uh, uh, here, let, let, you want, where you want to start in the '90s and the 2000s, 2000s? Hey, we look. We got some time, so we can take a decade by decade by decade. I want to hear it all. Oh, let's go back to the '90s when I was at BET. Uh, Kevin Lyles, uh, I, I met him at that time, and he took an interest in me, and uh, and he was like the only label president whose phone number or email I had, and if I called. Lauren Wurzer or Amber Noble or whoever was his assistant at the time will, you know, put me through, et cetera. And I was a young kid. I was in, like, literally, you know I mean? I was in a good place because I was at BET and BET was, there weren't very many um, national music outlets at the time, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. all black music, you know? So, so I was in a good place to think, but he used to actually come to DC because he was from Baltimore and he used to actually take the train down to DC. For, so Kevin, since back then, since then, when we moved to New York in 2000, because Stephen Hill brought um, 106 and Park, like brought the, 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 he was, the, he was the boss mm -hmm. and everything. But Kevin took a, a strong interest. Uh, when I was at BET, uh, Paul Porter was my boss, uh, Greg Diggs before that, um, uh, Chris Archie Melville, she was my supervisor when I was an intern. Theo Settlemeyer, uh, my, my first internship, he's a lawyer, he's, he, he, he was very uh, instrumental, especially in my early days, mm -hmm. and especially introducing me to people that I'm still in touch with up to today. Theo's like Drake's lawyer and, and DJ okay. Khaled's lawyer and Timbaland, and he's everybody's lawyer. He was Nipsey's lawyer when Nipsey was alive, you know? So, but I was his intern back in 1997, like, you know, 
et cetera, et cetera, when he was starting out. Uh, so he was 50 Cent, Eminem's lawyer. So, okay, that, that's, that, that, that's, so that's the 90s. Let's go to 2000s. Okay. 2000s, uh, I had more, this was more of the MTV world, like Richard Gay, who was like the highest, uh, he was like at VH1. Uh, he, uh, Christina Norman, who was the president of, of MTV um, at the time. She was uh, the first black woman to be president of MTV. She was head of uh, VH1. And she made that like popping. She made VH1 popping, and then they brought her to MTV. Um, Denmark West. I don't know if you know Denmark West. He's in more of like the investment world now. Okay. But Denmark used to give me some jewels, like because uh, I was lost. Because it's very hard. It's very hard to work in buildings like MTV. It's very very difficult. And 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 and, and there weren't very many. There were very few black people who were in positions of power. Like I'm talking about real power. I'm not I'm talking about like full budgets. They hire and fire like you know et cetera et cetera yeah PL. yeah so mm -hmm. so 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 i always had access to those guys and, and they were very very um like uh generous with knowledge uh um uh fast forward uh guys like troy carter you know like i, I met him more in my spotify time and and he was very uh generous and very smart of course, Lior, who, uh, who's he's my boss now, and I was my boss now, you know. So, uh, of course, a big John Platt, who's uh, inspiration and everything. Like literally, that, that was more for from a distance, you know what I mean? But, yeah. But, but but the inspiration and seeing how he moves and how he's done what he's done and how hard it is to achieve that. Uh, uh, let me see who else is because I'm more on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. Oh, Puff. Puff. Andre Harrell. Oh, may he rest in peace. Andre Harrell. Yeah. Uh, and I talked to him the week that he passed away. I talked to him three times. Really? Right? That's as, yeah. I still can't believe it. Yeah, That's I talked to him three times. The, he, so the the day before, the day and a half before, he called me the, at night, calling about Joe Biden. Like he's like, yo, did you read Joe Biden's black agenda? Andre, oh here, let me tell you a story, Andre. So I worked at Revolt, and Andre and Puff. So. I got connected. I knew Puff already, so when mm -hmm. they announced it, I texted him, and then he was like, "Not, not, not now." And then I had the people around him put bugs in his ear, you know, like from Sean Prez to um, Michelle James and who, who else? Uh, Bentley Fonsworth, you know. I had them like, "Yo, tell Puff." So Bentley called me from his phone, and it was like, "Puff wants to holler at you." So I was like, "Okay, all right, Puff." So Puff says, "Come meet," and then it was him, Andre Harrell, and Andy Schoen. Oh, wow. And Andre was very, very, uh, he embraced me from day one. And he used to come sit in my office, you know, tell me stories, give me game, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Like, he was very super generous. And, 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 and he, and, and this is the time I lived in Los Angeles for three years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, invite me to stuff, things that I wouldn't have gotten invited on my own accord, you know? Right. It, it is, and it was very, very, um, he was uh, like, like a father, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't like the, the way he approached it was like that. So Andre, uh, and then, and, and he used to back us up. And when we did the Revolt Music Conference, the, the Revolt Music Conference. Yeah. That was one of the best weekends of my life at that time. Tell me why. First of all, it changed my life because I ended up going to Spotify afterwards because okay. I'm, if anyone remembers, I'm the one who introduced the streaming uh, panel, right? And mm -hmm. at that time, I was going through a little bit of a crisis, a career crisis, where I was like, I, I got to do something different. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was just going to change. Yeah, and I knew it. I was, I knew it because I started seeing myself doing things that I had already done and, yeah. and then having to explain. And I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then, so I was like, I need to go to like a digital pure play, you know, something that was like pure digital. And then, so what happened was, uh, so that weekend is where I got that epiphany. Like really like, you know I mean? I had, I had a few epiphanies. The day I got my American citizenship, I remember I went to a Pitbull concert. <laughs> wow. Because I knew him. That's the way to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I mean, I, I, I was more for him than his music because I, 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 his, his music, he had become like a pop artist. And then mm -hmm. I was like, I went the other direction. And then I knew him from when he was a, a mixtape artist. 
and, and then and Big Teach and Perp, and when he was managed by Big Teach. So he was in town, and he's like, yo, you know, papi, pull up. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, snap. And then, so that was the day I got my citizenship, the uh -huh. World Music Conference in Miami. And, and, and that, was, uh, that was Andre's brainchild. Because Andre wanted a how can I be down type of Jack the Rapper uh, entry level tutorial. Like he was like, how about all these kids who have all these dreams and ambitions, but they don't know what to do or how to go about it. What's that thing? And he was like, Revolt Music Conference. And, and, it, and, it, and it ended up incredible. Like, I'll never, I, 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 yeah. by the way, I wasn't even a believer. I told Andre, I was like, Oh, you were? <laughs> no, I wasn't a believer at all. Not at all. I was like, I told him, I was like, Yo, it's too early. This is a baby brand. And with mm -hmm. baby brands, sometimes if you drop a baby brand too early, it's so fragile, it's, it's done. Right. I was, like, I was like, It's too early for Revolt to be trying to do something this ambitious. And he was like, Nah, 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 nah. And it was incredible. And it seems to me like a lot of your career has been being fearless, being strategic, knowing yeah. the right people to talk to. Yeah. So what advice would you give to the next generation who are trying to get into the music business or entertainment business? Because a lot of times I find when people are younger, they think things should come so easy and they don't understand about the strategy and be, being surgically strategic. What advice would you give to someone coming up? Because you've done that exceptionally in terms of knowing where to go and being strategic i don't i don't i don't want to put that myth up because i don't want it to because uh, if i if i allow that to be look the look that i'm being fearless and etc cetera, etc cetera, then then it'll be inaccessible right yeah okay i don't want that out there i have i fear a lot but uh, but i don't use fear as a thing to stop me more of a, a fear as a as a cautionary is like is is how to handle with care and, mm -hmm. and also one of the things i was told early was to protect my passion right so mm -hmm. so what happens is i is is i'm also very careful like how, like how, like the, the 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 way i expose the passion right or just no no here let me I use passion is not emotion, like at least in my head. Maybe it is a psychological term. Maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. Yeah. To me, passion and emotion are two different things. So I think with my brain. Okay. And then, and then, but I but I but I let my passion be the energy that that Ooh. that that helps those thoughts travel. I those, love that. Yeah, because if sometimes if you make decisions through emotions, right, you make bad decisions and then. Oh. The, Domino effect. There's a domino effect to yeah. those, that bad decision making. So, so in my mind, I I I, I separate passion and emotion, and and, and 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 so that way I can protect my passion because then I don't forget why I wanted to be in the music business in the first place. It's because I love music, and I say if I'm gonna have to work or get paid to work, I, let me paid to do what I love. But you, yeah, yeah, what you love. Yeah, exactly. So all the other stuff will be uh, distractions or trappings or things that get me sucked in and then you end up doing it for this reason and then you forget this and you have amnesia, then then you're disconnected and then you're, you're so like removed from that innocent 21 year old that, you know what I mean, with white eyes and, and you can't even listen to music the same because you're numb and jaded and and right, you, right. <laughs> I don't know what happened, and and by the way, and that's and and, and that's happened to me. That's mm -hmm. happened to me. But every time that happens to me, I have to recover. I have to heal. I have to reset, restore, and 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 and, and get back to like you know the 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 the, the, the purpose, the original mission, the original capture, the original essence. You know, every right. single time. Yeah, you know. I love honestly. It struck a chord with me when you said using fear as a motivator. I mean, that's, I'm about to put a post-it somewhere up in here and look at that every day because that, that is so real. So, yeah, real. No. And, and also, also, by the way, so, so somebody else told, told me like, uh, like in black music, we have different, a lot of more other factors that we have to deal with intangible factors, invisible factors. So, so not even, so, the, so even not getting tangled up that you don't even, that you miss, <laughs> these forces, you know, whether whether that force is danger. What about what about physical danger? How, yeah. is, is, rock artists aren't beefing, etc. You know, like you know what I'm saying. There's no uh, uh, when I say beefing, they're beefing, but there's no uh, 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 um, 
a physical like you know what I mean like right it's totally yeah, different. Yeah, 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 yeah home it's not it's like being a hazmat driver like you know what I mean? like like you're, you're a truck driver just like that but you have some serious you know what I mean explosive you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a lot of different um things that's like are like okay you, you can't afford to have foggy eyes you can't afford to you know yeah right now, speaking of things that we can't afford to not have, we can't afford to not vote. So, you know, right now we are coming upon a major election. We have our first African-American female vice presidential candidate. Yeah. And, you know, there's a certain energy in the air right now. How do you feel YouTube is going to use this energy and use this movement to bring those young voters to the polls, especially those 18 year old first time voters? Is well, there a plan for that? Well, you have to remember something else is that Google and YouTube both are neutral platforms. Mm -hmm. right? So th there's literally, it's like, can, you know, there's no like, like um, so it's, it's more about the voting. Right. You know what okay. I mean? It's more about voting. Everybody vote only because it's the 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 the, the platform was kind of built on that kind of neutrality. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I, I think the word is agnostic. It's like it's a you know what I mean? the platform is agnostic to mm -hmm. think. So so for, for us, it's more of like uh, an ongoing thing. Your your civil civic not civil civic. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 like, hey, this is your responsibility as a citizen, I and mean, this is your responsibility as, um, uh, 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 how do you explain? Yeah, as a, you know, as a, as a person. As a citizen, as a, yes, yeah. absolutely. So, so, so yeah, so a lot of, so the efforts are more of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. More of, uh, of, 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 uh, of making sure people actually do their part, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And then like coming from so many two different cultures and bridging that gap. How do you see the difference in terms of the political environment here versus there and then how music bridges that gap in terms of a political environment and making things happen. Um, well, you would say there you're talking about Africa or you're talking about in, okay. Hmm. Yep, Africa versus well, Africa, US politics, and... politics is a little bit trickier in Africa than it is here, you know? Mm -hmm. Is is uh uh so when musicians are very overtly political, it's a little bit riskier. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit riskier over there, you know? Right. So uh man, how does it look? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's riskier here. So I think people here are more outspoken in the music. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I should say, well, I should, no, I shouldn't say people. I should say commercial artists, artists that release music commercially, are a little bit more outspoken on politics, a little bit more active, and um, because there's there's less of a risk, you know, because you're not putting like your family at risk. Right. You know what I mean, they yeah. have less. They have less to lose. Yeah. So 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 so, 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 thinking from you, thinking from that perspective, is um, if you think from that perspective, is why not use your uh, your voice? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have that ability to use your voice. Why not use your voice? And especially when your people need you. Right. Especially when you've been a lot has been given to you, like you know, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah. Right. So, oh yeah. So that's tricky. That's that's a that's a tricky that's a tricky um, place. You know, like yeah, people are a little bit more um, at least right now. I mean, that might change. That might right. change. Right. Right. You know, also with social media and all that stuff. You know, but but yeah. Yeah. And let me ask you this: Like, how do we as people of an African descent maintain control and ownership of our musical culture? Because you know. You know, lots of people like to, you know, emulate things that we're doing in our culture. So, how do you, how do we maintain it and keep our ownership of that? In your opinion, uh, entrepreneurialism. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurialism. I think, I think the genres, the person that have done the best, uh, or in terms of growing, is where there's entrepreneurial culture, mm -hmm. and, and 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 hip hop. Let's take hip hop for example, right? We've had so many entrepreneurs. Uh, in the last what, 30, 40 years, uh, uh, and, 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 and 
and then if those entrepreneurs actually work together rather than you know mm -hmm. then be able to be pit against each other uh that's that you can have a powerhouse you know you see what i'm saying there's a huge that's a huge 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 uh yeah so entrepreneurialism okay okay i feel you on that and do you think there's a gap between the elder and younger artists oh a huge gap oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how do you think we close that gap uh, there's a humongous gap, especially especially because a lot of that has to do with technology too, by the way, and and and, and a lot of that has to do with uh, mentorship too. The young kids, first of all, have so much access to so much information that they almost feel like they don't need older people, right? Interesting. They, they need I older, like where you're going with this. They need the older people's dollars. Mm -hmm. And they may need older people uh, support in terms of like whether it be playlisting or whatever, whatever. But they're able to build audiences on social media, whether it be uh, uh, YouTube subscribers, SoundCloud, uh, um, building buzz on social media like um, Instagram or TikTok, etc. And they become this humongous. They become really big. And 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 that 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 the labels give them these big checks really, really early, 17, 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so then all of a sudden there's the life part where they don't, they're like, they feel like, like you, you never made this kind of money when you were my age or even at your age. Why, why am I going to listen to you? You know what I'm saying? Why am I going to listen to you? Uh -huh. why, yep. am I, why am I going to listen to you? Right. So this is this is what this is what I I, I learned and I and I learned it just a few years ago when I started seeing this disconnect the disconnect started happening when I, I remember when Snapchat was blowing up and I was at Revolt and I started and I remember going to Revolt and it was a whole bunch of young kids and it was like a different generation I was like and then I saw a different generation when Lil Yachty and Playboy Cardi and all the, and Lil Uzi Vert started popping up right it was a whole other generation I was like who are these kids. I was like, oh, is, is these kids is older, younger sisters and younger brothers, right? <laughs> right. No, no, but, 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 but these guys got big checks. So when I noticed that, now they would have artist visits, you try to talk to them and they, you're not trying to hear you, right? right. So it's right. this, so, so I noticed that they started making moves without the establishment and the establishment was chasing them, right? And what happens is the and and we we're talking about entrepreneurs working together. Yeah. The establishment was they were not dealing, they were competing so much in bidding wars, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how these kids were getting to these places. And, that, and by the way, sometimes this leads to early deaths because these kids have so much money and they don't have the um nobody's trained them about security, about not putting their addresses on social media or or no, I'm just being uh, frank. That's true, though. I mean, that's real. This a few times now, mm -hmm. or 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 they don't have any guidance on like you know what. Once you get a certain type of success, you don't need to be in this place and this place. You prove nothing. That's so true. By, by that, because this place and this place is where you're going to provoke certain um, attention. You know, mm -hmm. or this city, or get out of this city, or or do not and we've seen it several times and, and in the nba what happened was when they start having these really young kids getting all this money they start putting guardrails like okay there's the age limit or or you have to go through this rookie training camp so it teaches you how to manage money how to deal with groupies how to not not deal with groupies but how to identify you know what i mean uh yeah. is 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 the NBA started having all these type of um, developmental uh, programs and mechanisms so that they, these did not become distractions or in some cases didn't put you in, in jeopardy, right? Music, we don't have that. We don't have that. So, so the disconnect, the generation gap, because the older generation do not become fluent or proficient in these new technologies and these kids are digital natives so you're you're not going to have any kind of authority if you don't if you can't even speak this language because you've made your money or you've achieved your whatever career success and you're not putting in the time because you think oh i'm too old for this or right. like oh no 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 which is almost like i'm too good for this right no yeah. 
study those. Even if you have to have private type of, you know, get fluent in them, you know, et cetera, et cetera, because that's how you're going to be able to speak to these young kids. You know? Do you think maybe you can create like a, a summit for specifically for these young kids getting these big checks before? Well, I, I, think, they... I, think there's, I think there's some in pro, pro, uh, I can't talk on about. Uh, I'm, I have access to privileged and confidential information that's something okay. like that. In, in the, you know what I mean? In, you can in, tell me. Nobody else will know. Nobody else will know. It'll be our little secret. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. It's, it, well, it's not my idea. It's somebody else who's working on it. So I can't breach that trust. Okay. But I think but, that's but, brilliant. That's, Something's in the works. Something's okay. In the works. Yeah. No? Now, speaking of, you know, generation gaps, I'm going to ask an old school question. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, because, you know, we always talk about streaming and all that. Is radio still relevant to the music business? And are these young people, are they ignoring radio? Is it still yeah, no, no. a medium they use? Uh, radio, and radio will never not be relevant. Because you have to remember something. Is this. Is radio reaches a different audience, right? Mm -hmm. Is a super passive audience. It's, okay, here, let me, I'm gonna break down things. You got your low intent listeners and you have your high intent listeners. High intent okay. is exactly what they want. They know what's hot, what's not. They, 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 they wanna get straight to their, their song or their album. Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly, track six. You know what I mean? They know exactly what they want. Low intent is like, I just wanna go work out. I just wanna go, um, I just want some music for dinner, background music. I just want, so, so you don't, it's, it's not necessarily that you don't know what you want. You're not in the mood to go be that specific and put in the work to organize, et cetera. So that's what playlists uh, deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is radio yeah. is the same thing. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're getting the same audience. They're, they're, and that's why the, 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 the way they pick songs proves it, that they want the audience that's looking for something familiar, something they can sing along with in the car. You see what I'm saying? The, the commute is to kill time. It's, it's just, it's to keep in touch with what's happening, the traffic or weather, but it's not that deep. Like they're, they're, when they know what they want to listen to when it's time for them to be in their high, high intent mode, right? So radio reaches a, a, a different level of that low intent. It's not, you know what I mean? Like I just want to go work out and then let me put on a, 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 a cardio playlist, you know, it's like, I'm just in my car and with my kids and I want something clean. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be saying, as, having to describe, to explain what WAP stands for. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, so when people keep on saying, is radio irrelevant? It, no, because that section is in that mood is a lot of people that's a lot of people like that's a use case that's not going away anytime soon if you see what i'm saying like and there's like, still xm and satellite too and, and also radio stations have relationships with their communities if i'm in houston in the box if i'm in uh uh dc whur or wpgc these are heritage stations i've been all listening to them all my life if donnie simpson comes on the radio that's donnie simpson like you see what i'm saying that's it you're not just going to replace him with a, a, a playlist you see what i'm saying it's not happening you see what right. i'm saying so yeah so, i hear you call it the vi the radio you call the vip section hey, there you go there you go there, there you go yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah so i i'm i i i, I love the radio i still listen to the radio uh, and when I say still, because some people say the thing, and, and even if, uh, and don't dismiss radio with young people because there may be a time where uh, um, radio uh, has an innovation that really like captures the fascination of, of the young people who are not listening right now, you know? Yeah, so. Yeah, and people still relate to the radio DJ, right? That's 100%. part of it, yeah. Personalities. Mm -hmm. personalities. And, and, and the DJs have their relationships so they can get information out of the artists that other people can't because you, sometimes you have to feel like comfortable, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So when you talk about, you know, a radio being kind of a, another version of a playlist, when you put together that rap caviar playlist, what was your thinking as you put different music into well, that and how you cur curated that? At the time, I was just looking at it like Sports Center. you know, uh, is, is I, I'm a sports fan, but over years, I became so busy, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so when I used to get home at night, I would only watch one thing. I didn't really watch television that much. I watched Sports Center, 
just to keep in touch, right? Mm -hmm. And even that, I stopped watch. I watched less and less because I became busier and busier and busier. And so I couldn't keep up with who all the players were, who was uh, on top. So I only started caring about my team, right? And then, and so what happens is, um, so that time, the the concept was basically kind of being like Sports Center. Like this is these are the highlights of the culture. There were, there were so many other deep dive playlists that even I worked on. You know what I mean? That 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 served a different purpose. Like if you want to watch the whole game, if you want to watch, if you know, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, really I like cool. how you. I like that analogy. Yeah, but that's that's how that was the approach. That was the approach. And and at the time there was no a TRL or 106 where people would just check in and see what what's the hottest. You know what I mean? Right. Et so you know. I think we need another TRL and 106. I, I feel like it's needed. I have privileged and confidential information uh, about something like that coming one day soon, too. So. You have all the tea. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You have all the tea. Now, before, I, I have to tell you, I hear that there is a congratulations in order. You've had a good year, 2019. You had the wedding. You got married before all the craziness happened in the world. Oh, thank God. Before. <laughs> we, we didn't know about Corona. Yeah, I know. It's like that was the perfect timing. But we do have to congratulate you on your upcoming Living Legends Foundation Digital Music Executive Award in oh, 2021, you. where you'll be part of the foundation's 30th anniversary celebration. So you are actually a living legend, brother, already. Uh, I, I, I'll accept the accolade, but I, I, I don't know if I can accept the label. You know what I mean? I'd rather, it's, it's, it sounds better when it comes from you. How about that? You know? I think, you, listen, yeah. listening to your whole career, your background, you are a living legend for sure. So what's next for you, Tuma? Like, where do you see your trajectory for the next five years? Well, I, I'm only 45, so I still had like another 25 years before retirement. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> And maybe 30, if, 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 if I'm lucky, like, you know? So the thing is this, so so for me, the, the next thing is, uh, is is empowerment, you know, is 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 what all the lessons I've learned uh, is is uh, sharing that knowledge, you know? And, 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 and the knowledge is not necessarily like academic, like, you know what I mean? Like, like explicit thing is, is also like the, um, whatever wisdom, you know, whatever wisdom, figuring out how to put that in words or figuring out how to put that in instruction or figuring out how to put that in, in a leadership style so that uh, I, like I had people who led by example and I just emulate their style and just, you know, and tweaked it to my own is that I can provide a blueprint or example for others, you know, uh, and, and, and whether it be navigating within these companies, whether it be tech companies or media companies, whether it be navigating uh, through uh, uh, possible entrepreneurialism or poss possible authorship or, you know, whatever, whatever comes next, right? But yeah. be embracing that and, and that it doesn't, it's not about me. It's about the people that are, uh, that, that, uh, will be impacted the most, and that, that that impact is a positive impact. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that in like in a like a kind of like a preachy way. I'm saying that. No, it a, doesn't sound like yeah, that. Yeah, at all. yeah, yeah. So that there's a, so, so, like in in marketing, you have the halo effect. Something happens, and then and then it spills over to so many other parts of that. You know, that mm -hmm. that whole you know one X. You know, yeah. And let me ask you this: like, I know we're coming to an end, but I have to ask this what do you think has been the most contributing factor to you being so successful and i know you're humble but i mean you are a huge success and what do you think has been con major contributing factor to that um biggest co contributing factor is my support system you know oh. yeah, yeah yeah you know is is my family uh because you, you talk about humility it's like, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I have a choice in my family. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> so there's that, my support system, my peers, right? People that I come up with, people I started with, and uh, us keeping uh, 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 each other, like, um, honest. Uh, my, um, uh, the, 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 the culture, right? Just keeping up with the culture, 
the the beauty of black culture is that it's always changing. There's always some innovation every day. So keeping up with that is fun, and mm-hmm. and, and, it, and it keeps you young. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. so 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 for me, I enjoy I enjoy that process. So keep you know what I mean. So enjoying the process, and and having fun with the process, so that it it, it doesn't feel like uh like like we were saying earlier before work. So it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, 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 yeah. because. Oh, this is, oh, let me give you some uh, thing. Is when you enjoy something, no, this is real, this is real Yeah, good. this is good. When you enjoy something, I was just talking about this with my wife, is uh, we watch, I was watching an interview. When you enjoy something, right, whether you're creating content or creating a company, et cetera, et cetera, the people on the other end will feel that energy. Yeah. And, and, if, and if, if something's too process-oriented, or there's too many hands in it, or it's political, or it, when I say political, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about socially conscious, I'm talking mm-hmm. about, it's like, oh, you have to do this because so-and-so, so-and-so is, is, means this, so-and-so, et cetera, et cetera. When it gets too, it'll also feel that way at the other end. Something won't feel right, right? So everything you do is that, that you're having, that you're having true joy. Like you're like, okay, you're taking this attitude, like it's an attitude, no, you, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, let me have fun with this. What can we do to make this special or historic or, or popping, right? Yeah, so that yeah. by the time it's finished, people will feel it. And you just sit there with pride, like, yeah. You know you see what I'm saying? That's, yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. And then, and then you go do it again. Because uh, Irv Gotti once said that this is a do it again business. And that's, that's how you keep it humble. It's like, it, he said, I remember what he, he said, uh, he said, Oh, you had a hit record? Okay, do it again. Oh, okay, you got a Grammy? Okay, nice. Congratulations, <laughs> do it again. Okay, you had a number one song? Well, do it again. Uh, successful tour? Okay, do it again. Oh, they calling this a classic? Oh, it's a, uh, oh, you know how to make classics? Okay, then do it again. So, yeah. so that do it again mentality, uh, 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 the making it ongoing is, 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 is yeah, that, so that's what keeps me, yeah. Well, I have to tell you, this has been just such an awesome opportunity to get to know you and hear your story. And seriously, you are a verified hit. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank much you. for joining us. This has been no, so infi- insightful for sure. No, thank you. No, okay. Thank All right. You. Make it a good day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, always. Always a good day. All and right. for all you guys out there watching, there'll be more great interviews like this right here on Music Day, a verified hit. See you guys soon. Music Day, a verified hit is presented by the Living Legends Foundation, Inc. Real talk with experience. Please follow and share Music Day on Instagram at Living Legends Foundation and at Music Day Podcast on Twitter at The LLF Inc. Join us on Facebook, The Living Legends Foundation. Executive producers are Jacqueline Reinhardt, Mark Hill, Ken Johnson, and Pat Shields. Our associate producers are Shannon Henderson, Sheila Eldridge, Tony Winger, Vivian Scott Chu, and Varnell Johnson. Production by Mark Hill Creative. Talent booking, Black.LLC. Theme music by Wendell Wellman for Star Maker Global. Interstitial music by William Reinhardt. And I'm your announcer, Jay Johnson.